Yes, that's one uh, reason, especially from some certain stations. Um, even, you know, somebody like Fox News, a little bit of their, um, they try to be as fair as possible, but sometimes I think, you know, sometimes I think it leans a little bit to the right, um, where all the other channels pretty much lean to the left, um, I think. Um, Anybody ever heard of uh, One America News Network? Anybody ever heard of that? There's a new station on, uh, on I don't know what the, Direct doesn't cover it. Direct doesn't have it, but uh, Charter and some of the cable stations have it. It's called One, it's O-A-N-N. And it's, uh, I think it's a couple of channels down from Fox News. And there's another one called Newsnight that's coming fairly new. So there are a couple of channels, two or three channels that are coming out that are new that are a little bit on the right. Um, and I think that's good because you get both views. And you got to watch for misrepresentation of data because of violence. What's the other reason? Most common. Most common reason. People just don't know. People just don't know that their graph, graph is misrepresenting the data. Um, how many people do you know that you know <laughs> that know statistics? Not many people know that you have to make the little pictographs. You have to make them scale. You can't make one bigger than the other based on what you think. You have to be. They have to be the right scale. You'll see that in here with some of the. Uh, some of the examples that we have. Um, I'm not going to be, you know, too detailed on this. Uh, the main thing is make sure you understand what I mean. Um, the biggest ones I'll show you in just a second. I mean, uh, usually pictographs. Anything showing a graph, anything showing like this. This misleads. Why does this mislead? I mean, it's a 62, it's a 54. But why does it mislead? Huh? Exactly. Look at the graph. Most people are going to focus on the blue block boxes. All right? And if you look at this, you say, oh, holy, the Democrats know what they're doing. No matter what. You don't even know what the graph means. Okay? It's meant to lead. And you gotta watch for things like this. Let me show you one that really I'm not really bar graph is not what I'm really the picture graph is what I'm trying to show you. As soon as I get the picture graph, that's it. That's what will be on the, like that right there. Now, I don't know where the data is. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Soccer continues to grow popularity in sport in the United States. It does? I didn't know that. High-profile players such as blah, blah, blah have helped to generate blah, blah, blah. There are approximately, in 1991, there was 10 million. So see, that represents 10 million. By 2007, this number had climbed to 14 million. Okay, what's wrong with this data? Y'all remember what I told y'all about cell phones, right? That while I'm talking, it's rude to use cell phones? That was a warning shot. 
second time, I'm going to embarrass you. I don't use my phone when you come and ask me a question. All right, now, now what's wrong with this? What's wrong with this? Somebody tell me. Well, that, yeah, there's no numbers. So you couldn't even, I mean, honestly, you have to have your numbers on the graph somewhere. What else? There's no, the scale is way out of wampus. Look at, look at that ball right there, the 1991 ball. Look at it, and look at the size of the, what do you call them things? Somebody's soccer people. What do you call them? I don't even know what that is. You know, the little, the, it looks like the Pentagon. Okay. Look, well, look at the white Pentagons and the black Pentagon. What could you do with that 1991 ball? You could actually fit that 1991 ball in one of those white ones, couldn't you? So, how many could you fit just on the, just on the surface of that ball? Come on, tell me. How many? About five, maybe. The outside edges might make up a sixth one. But what does it say in the in the paragraph? Fourteen million, and the first one was ten million. So is this a good representation? I don't think so. I think that I think it. What does it What does it make it look like? It makes it look like the whole United States is just sold out to soccer. That's what it makes it look like. All right? Plus, they don't put any numbers up there, so you just go by what? Visual. Don't ever go by visual. That's, that's a real-life application, all right? Don't ever go by visual. Anybody ever bought a car before? Anybody ever seen these? tricked out cars that blow blue smoke. I think they need to take some of that money and invest in what? Engine. If it's blowing blue smoke, that means you burn an OIL. Okay? Anyway, don't don't go by visual. Because you always need to see the numbers. Always. They got a OIL barrel somewhere in here but not doing the homework. All I want you to do is be aware of the distortion. And when I see one, it's probably in the homework. Let's see if I can find one. Let's look at that one. That's a good example. I like to use the hint, hint. Um, somebody tell me what's wrong with this picture. I don't have any numbers yet. How many times will 7 go into 700? Oh, so you put 100 of these in here? Can you put a hundred of these little barrels in this barrel right here? You might could get six in there. You see the misrepresentation? As long as you see it. And what I would always suggest you do when you're looking at a graph is always ask yourself, okay, that's seven, so you should be able to fit 700 of those. I meant no, 100, sorry. You should be able to fit 100 of those into that barrel not a good representation. Okay? So make sure you know how to look at pictures, how to look at graphs and make sense out of it. Uh, cost of raising kids. Eleven, fifteen, eighteen. The first you need to add up. Thirty-three. What is that? Fifty-one. 
Somebody help me out. Seven seven. Don't add up to what? Don't add up to hundred for one reason, for one thing. Um what do I not like? I don't like that the end of the three of is right here. And that thirty-three is right there. That thirty-three should be right around here. Why is it misleading? Because the it's almost reaching the end of the graph. And it's at thirty-three percent. So you've got two misleading things. One is it's not equal to hundred. They need to have another they need to have another uh, something in there to equal 100, or you just don't spend, you know, whatever. It needs to equal 100, or say, where the other money is, something, some kind of note. And then it has 33% at the three quarters position. Um, that's not right. So I just answered my own questions on what could be anything else. Well, look at the 11%. Anybody see anything about the 11%? And the 33%? Exactly. Now what about the 11? What, what, what do I see with the 11 and the 33? And how many times does 11 go into 33? So what's wrong with that picture? It's not proportional. The whole graph is not proportional. So you need to write down things like that. That's a good example. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pick out one that you can't see. I'm going to pick out one for the test that, that is pretty much. Ideal family size, zero. Ideal family size, 52%, uh, 0 to 2, 38%, well, 38, what is that? That's 80, right? No, 90, and then 2%. That's good. That equals 100. All right? Now let's look at the 52%. Well, 52%, you got 90%. I think this one looks okay. I don't see anything unless it's a trick. I don't see anything that that uh, says that it's not. You know, you might could say that it's not proportional to the size of the picture. It does need some kind of scale. You need something on the left-hand side to, you know, maybe uh, a wide scale or something. I mean, but this picture could be bigger than just put it off. You know, that, that's not a big deal. So that looks okay. That's okay, that's it. Chapter two. You think we're in chapter three already? That means we got a picture to go into math. What page is it on, Mr. Page get into the math. <clears throat> this is 80% of your test. Chapter 3 is going to be 80% of your test. So if I give you 20 questions, that means 14 of them, somewhere around there, let's see, 10 would be, what, 16 of them, yeah, 16 of them are going to be from chapter 3. Well, take off the bonus question, it's going to be about 6 or 7 are going to be from, and the other three are going to be from chapters one and two. So you might want to start writing some notes down, because I know there's going to be something in here that some of you haven't seen before, because especially when we get into finding the uh, mean standard deviation of a frequency distribution, some of you may not have done that before. So I'm trying to find my way around here. First. I'm not used to this book. I've got to make sure. All right. Everybody knows what the mean is, but if you want to write it down, that's fine. Um, of course, the mean is the average. It's also called X bar. 
X bar is what you're going to see a lot of, so you might want to make a note of that. Some people write it out, X bar, some people put a bar over the X. You need to write that out because when you see it, you don't need to say, wait a minute, what is X bar? What is you don't need to have any hesitation. Some of you that's had Math 120 before, you know that. But some of you that haven't, you're going to be going, okay, what is X bar? What is X bar? Okay, learn it. X bar is the average, it's the mean. Because whenever you see X bar, you may see it in a frequency distribution, and you'll be like, oh my God, what does that mean? So you need to know it. It needs to be put to memory for those that have never used X bar before. Now, if you see X bar in a presentation, you know it has to do with the what? The sample. X bar is the sample. What about mu? That has to do with population. Again, is, is the mathematics different? No. The mathematics is the summation of X over N. That's the math, whether you do it a population or a sample. Why do you need to know the difference between X bar and mu? So you don't look ignorant. That's basically it. Or you don't have to ask, what, 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 which one's population mean? You're in a presentation. You know which one's population mean because that's mu. Sample mean is X bar. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, see, same formula. Now, for those of you that don't know Greek letters, this is sigma. Capital, capitalized, sigma. Sigma means summation. So you add up all your values and you divide by n. The only reason I'm bringing that up is not to insult your intelligence. I'm bringing that up because a lot of people have never seen that before. Some of y'all in here are going, looks like an E to me. This is sigma. Uppercase sigma, lowercase sigma is the standard deviation for the population. That's a little circle with a little possible little impossible. Yes, I want to work that. Okay? Now, I'm not going to spend any time doing the population mean or the sample mean. I will do right quick. I want you to get your calculators out. Let me go on the calculators real soon. If you don't have a calculator, use a calculator on your phone, and I want you to find the average of these numbers right quick. I want to make sure everybody can find the mean, okay? And that way everybody can, when we, you know, do the number, when we have the answer up here, you, uh, everybody, make sure everybody can find the mean. Got 79. Okay, I don't. Why do you? Why do I feel y'all don't need any help on this? Because y'all are all 18 years or older. I'm 17. Shut up. You know what I mean. You're in college, all right? You're in a college class. So that means you've had at least 12 years of what? Of classes, right? And what do you figure at the end of every class? You're what? You're great. So everybody in here knows how to do an answer. If you don't, 
I'm not going to make fun of you, but you don't need to tell anybody. Okay? You should be able to do that. Now, I'm not going to... Now, I'm going to spend a week on finding the stand, uh, mean and standard deviation of a frequency distribution, so if I bet you a dollar happy, you probably have never seen that before. So, whether you've had Math 120 or not before, I don't know. I don't know what they teach in high school. So, and they show you how to do that, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into that because I'll show you how to find all the stuff at one time, so that way you don't have to go to different places in your calculator. I'll show that to you when we get there, okay? Next page. I'm going to get to the standard deviation of the median. Okay? First of all, don't even, don't even look at the definition. When you hear the word median, and don't say, don't say the middle number because nobody ever thinks that is median. What do you think of when you hear the word median? Thank you. You fell right in there. Thank you. Look behind the thing. All right? Something in the middle of the road. You'll never forget it now. Middle, middle, middle number, middle of the road. Median is always the middle of the road. Now, what if you have an even number of numbers? You take the middle two and take the what? Average. Write that down. If you have an even number, if the n is even, you take the middle two numbers and average them. What if it's odd? The middle number. Okay. And I'm not going to sit here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the middle number is two seventeen. That's simple. Now a lot of people say, okay, the mean and the median and blah, 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 blah. Well, what are they? What is the mean and the median? If I was to ask you what the mean is, a lot of you would go, let's take all of them up and have them divide by the number there. Or no, that's not the definition. That's how you find, that's how you calculate the mean. But what is the mean? The mean is, I'm going to have to draw a picture of this. Huh. Let's say we have a graph. And can I draw shapes in this thing? No, I don't want to go there. Let's go. Let's go with uh this. Say you have that, that, and I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Now, if I was to ask you what is the mean, you would have no idea because it's a number. But the definition of the mean, or the definition of the average, is the number that represents no variation. It's not going to write that down. The number that represents no variation. 
what is the variation here? What is variation? If I was to ask you what to define variation, what would you say? That's not rhetorical, I'm asking you. That means I won't tell them that. What does variation mean? The difference between the, the, the uh, rectangles, right? When I say this is a this class varies, what does that mean? It's different. It's different from day to day, maybe? I don't know. Some of y'all may think, no, it's not. Well, I'm sorry. If you want to see no variation, there's some other features we can go to, okay? Uh, where is the variance here? Well, it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, or whatever. Well, what if I was to be magical here, and I was to take off, of course, I can't do it with this thing, because I don't know, I haven't even had training on this test one thing. Let's say I was to saw off this part right here. Turn it over and stick it where? Right here. Everybody with me? And then I was to take off this piece right here. Nobody in here better say that's one from one. Alright? You take that and dump it where? Right here, Hubert. That's right, Paul. Appreciate the interaction. And then I take magenta and I put it, y'all need to imagine this thing. Right there. What have I done? I've basically chopped off these extensions right here and filled them in right here. And now, the new number, or the number that represents where everything is locked off, is what? Number, what number does that represent? Or what does, that's the average. The average is the number where there is no variation. The average is the number where you take this piece, dump it in there, take this piece, dump it in there, and take this piece and dump it in there, and everything is what? Even. That's the definition of average. I guarantee you somebody in here has went all the way through a probability of statistics course, and they didn't know that that's what they're doing. Anybody? Anybody want to raise their hand? I'm not going to. But I'm serious. There's a lot of people that don't know what the average is. They say, if they, they ask you the average, they go, you add them up and divide by n. That's not the definition of average. The definition of average is the number that represents no variation. What's the only thing that has no variation? that we measure. Anybody want to take it? Somebody answered this the other day. Time. Good. Why does it have no variation? Because we can't what? We can't control it. I think that's so interesting. I think time is so interesting. Yeah, I'm weird. I asked one person, I asked a person one time, I said, you know, what would happen if we could go to the speed of light? Because I was talking about time. And I was, I was thinking, you know, how would you be able to see because your headlights wouldn't work? That's what I was thinking, you know. Going, being able to travel the speed of light. They said you'd run into a tree. Okay. That's some real out there thinking. You run into a tree. You don't understand me. Don't worry about it. You run into a tree. 
Buddy, I'd be trying to go back in time. That's what I'd be trying to do. Anybody ever seen the Langoliers? Get your parents thought. It's a movie back in the 80s. Stephen King. Nobody has seen the Langoliers. All right, you need to write that down. You need to watch it. It's a good movie. It's a lot of people, it's, you know, there's two theories of time. One theory is that you could go back in time, you could fix things. Another theory is that you could go back in time, there would be nobody there. Oh, that day is gone. The Langoliers is a movie about going back and nobody being there. Good movie. Alright, now, why is the mean and the median so important? Because the mean and the median represent the center. Not like church center, like center. Alright? Now, why is that so important? Because if the middle, if the median and the mean are together, or close, then you've got tight, 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 tight that. What does tight data mean? What does that mean? Huh? Technically, it means, yes, there's not a lot of room for error because the data is valid. All right? Let me show you a, uh, and, I, and I show this all the time. In fact, one of my, one of my students told me that my uh, student that uh, really just like me, and I had to make Lee flat stupid semester today, put on there that I showed stupid drawings of bearings and, and, and axles or something like that. It doesn't have anything to do with math. And your degree is in what? Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, tolerance. What does the word tolerance mean? It has different meanings. being how much I'm going to be able to put up with Miss Mitchell. That, that's a, that's a, another meaning. That's not what I'm, what, I'm, uh, what I'm going for here. How many of you have, <coughs> how many of you have had a chance for drawing before? Okay. Right. What, what is tolerance? There's something called pistol strength. Anybody know what pistol strength is? Let's play this for two by four. No, no, no. <laughs> if you put weight on a board or an object, pistol strength is how much weight you can put on that board before it works. That's pistol strength. Some of you, you know, when you're around building houses, you have to put the building a house on the pedestal. You have to put the pedestal up 7 feet or 8 feet. You have to call it maybe 1 by 6 or 2 by 6 or whatever. And then, of course, you know, 300 pound woman walking across the area and all these holes. Alright? Alright. So, I don't know. Tolerance. There's another application of tolerance. You said strength, and that's right. You said
physical shaft, the metal shaft, and it runs through the big bearing house. <clears throat> and there's a gear out here, it burns and burns, whatever. I don't care. It could be on a harrow, it's all plowed and on. It could be on a, you know, the roller inside an industrial factory. Right? Let me just say, let's say that I just sit in this little chair and I just put this bar. I didn't want to put bearings in these bearings. Y'all know what a bearing is? A bearing is a got little rollers like that. Or a ball bearing is a piece of metal, two pieces of metal, and it has little balls right there. These are roller bearings, these are ball bearings. Anybody ever seen one? Huh? Yes or no? Okay, some, some of y'all, anybody know, never seen one? So I'm going to show it to you. Now, this is, uh, a lot of you are like, what is he talking about? Just bear with me, okay? Because this does have an application, and you will understand it as soon as I can figure out how to work this thing, uh, when I get to it, okay? Just bear with me. I promise. Tolerance is very important. Because you're trying to understand if something is valid or not. Um, hold on. I have seen this in the There's a bearing housing. Okay? The blue right here is a bearing housing. And the, the black, see the silver ring, the black and the silver, see those three things right there? That's a bearing. Now that's a sealed bearing. It's not an open bearing, it's a sealed bearing. Sealed bearing, you put grease in it and it doesn't pour it out. I'll show you. There's another bearing housing. Oh, shoot. I hate these things. I don't know. How do I get out of here? Hey, okay, here's, I had another bearing now. It was pretty, I'm pretty. Hey, damn it. Okay, here's the bearing. Y'all see different bearing houses. Here's, here's the bearing. Well, no. I was going to try to show you a bearing, an open bearing, and a closed bearing. But anyway. Here's another bearing housing, right there. All right, now, the shaft goes through here. I'm gonna try one more thing, and then I'll shut up. I'm gonna try bearing, bearing houses on the shaft. Okay, Y'all with me? Y'all see this? This is a picture of a, it's a side, it's a cross section of a bearing. Here's the bearing, see the rollers, see the, see the ball bearing, and then the shaft. Now, this is the best, this is the best way to show you what tolerance is and what swap is. Let's say that what happens is you don't, Breathe these bearings. That's the great thing that's on the table. So, you pull up there, put the grease down, put the grease down, like on the fall. I don't know, I have no idea that I'm going to fall. Alright? What if you don't put grease in it? The fleet, yeah. But this thing turns about 25 RPM. It's going to have to do what first? It's going to be good. Come on, business people. I know you're not good business. Hot friction. It's going to blow out this bearing. So when it blows out the bearing, it's going to seep up and just stop because this this is going to get hot and this bearing is going to get hot and it's going to weld itself together, seep up. Or it's going to blow out these, these ruts and this, what is this thing going to start doing at 
27 RPM. It's going to start bouncing. And when it starts bouncing, it starts beating the housing up down here and down here. And it starts beating the shaft up. It causes a lot of flop. Flop. What is flop? Flop is tolerance when you have a gap in the tolerance. Well, your data's not tight. So that means you have to go back and do some more data. Your data will tell you if you've got good data or not. Okay? So hopefully that'll stick in your brain housing group now. Especially since I went through and did all that. And I do that with all my... Whenever I talk about validity and numbers, I talk about being tight and having swap. If you go to a mechanic and you say, how many of you have had an old car or a car, and when you turn the wheel, the wheels don't turn? What's that called? Anybody know what that's called? Okay, y'all care. All right? That's called play in the what? play in the steering. Like there's a lot of play in the steering. That's what it's called. The gearbox has worn down, where you know the gearbox that transitions the steering wheel to the linear steering rod. Steering tank's got a lot of play in it. So you have to tighten it up. And usually 
there's a little bit of adjustment on the gearbox. You can go down there and there's, there's, a, there's a lock nut and a nut on the, the gearbox. You can actually turn it and it tightens that up. You're taking out the what? Taking out the clock. Or the plug. What do you call the plug? I got a lot of plug in my wheel. Got a lot of slot. Okay? Uh, I tell y'all about uh, talking to one of my students the other day and she was frustrated with her boyfriend because she had to change the tire and her boyfriend didn't know how to change the tire. Huh? I know, the point is, her boyfriend couldn't do it. I feel sorry for y'all women now. I really do. Y'all don't have much juice for me. No offense, guys, I'm not talking about y'all. You got a guy that don't know how to change the tire? If you don't know how to change the tire and you're a guy in here, don't say nothing. Just learn how to change the tire because you're worthless. You need to learn how to change the tire. That's all I'm going to say about that. If I feel anybody, I don't care. Man needs to know how to change the tire. Man is turning into something. I'm trying to get there, y'all. I'm trying to my two two things of software is just not working. Alright, there's my column. Um, again, I thought I'd like to see that again. Okay. So now you know. Now you know why center is so important. Center is important to basically tell you if your data is what? Worth anything. There we go. Why that's important. Okay, that's, we don't need that. Y'all know how to find the median there. Nothing really important there. Skewed right, yes, right here. You need to know this. You need better write it down because it's going to be on the test. Page 121. It's always the opposite. If, you, if most of your data is on the right, that's skewed left. If most of your data is on the left, that's skewed right. Now, what does that mean? Anybody want to take a stab at what skewed right means and skewed left means, besides the data is all on the left or the right or whatever? What does it mean, though? Give me an example of what it, what it means. Anybody want to take a stab at it? Yeah, which way it's leading to, but get, do you have an example? Do you know an example of what that look, would look like in real life? I'm trying to get you to think about real life applications. No, real life, like in real life, where would you see something like this? Yeah, not the graph. In other words, in a classroom and what, what would what would be an example of skewed right and skewed left? Anybody want to take a stab at it? All right, let me let me give you. One. Let's say I gave y'all a test on unit one. Oh God, my hand is going to come out. I give you a test on unit one, and let's say all of you make 105 on it. Every one of you. And what would that be? Huh? It'd be a miracle. It would be skewed left. Why? Well, the average is where? In the middle. And where is all the 105? On the right. So, you might want to put it down here. Yes, Now, 
why have I not fantastic teacher? Because no matter how fantastic I am, there's going to be one DA in the class that's going to screw it up. Always. Remember my three rules? I don't know if I told y'all my three rules a lot. Nothing is what? I heard. Nothing is what? Nothing is great. Men should not get married before they're 40. And the last one is this. There's always one. No matter what group you're in, there's always one that's going to screw it up. Always. I don't care if I give y'all a quiz that says what day is it. Somebody will put the date. I've actually done that before. I actually gave a bonus question one time. Just, just for people showing up. What's the day? And somebody put the date instead of the day. There's always one. Okay? Now, why, what, what does the 105, does everybody make 105 on the test, what does that tell me as a teacher? Y'all just don't want to interact, or y'all just all dumb, huh? What? It was two what? That's what it tells me. What would tell me if, if I was a great teacher and it was not an easy test? What would tell me that? I'd have what? I'd have something like this. Or maybe a little jump right here. Okay? You with me? Why? Because there's always one. There's always, I don't care how easy I make the test, somebody will do it. Don't ask me why. But that right there is what you want. Something like this. Now, it can have a bump here, or it can have a bump here, but you want this. Because that tells you that everything is what? Everything is what? As my daughter, when she was little, would say, normal. Okay? Everything is normal. How about skewed left? What would that mean? That means I suck as a teacher, doesn't it? No. It means the test is too what? Why? Why does it mean I suck as a teacher? Because no matter what, there's always going to be one 1800 SAT that's going to ace the test no matter how hard I am. There's always going to be one person that's got a photographic memory that remembers everything they read in that book. There's always going to be one. I never can have this. There's always going to be one. Okay? That's what that means if, if everybody fails the test. Everybody. Then that means something's wrong with the what? The test. So, skewed left and skewed right is very important, especially in a setting where you're obtaining data. And that's what I'm doing as a teacher. I'm obtaining data from you. You know, how well you retain something. Or how well, how big a loser you are. One of the two. Okay. Mountain View, coffee, and tea. You need to start drinking it before you come to the class. Or I'm going to start teaching like y'all are reacting. How about that? You want me to do that? Y'all answer a regular question. All right, how many of y'all went to see a movie this weekend? Like, what'd you go see? I I want to go see that movie because I like uh, Robert De Niro. I don't know who the other guy is, but I think the Robert De Niro. I love Robert De Niro. Was he good in the movie? I like. Huh? Yeah, him. He he fits in that category with me. Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Robert DeBall. They, they, they have their own little club. And then I got others. But Tommy Lee Jones, um, Denzel Washington, Sean Connery, that's, they, they fit in that little room. They're not, they're two different, two different actors. But anyway, nobody else seen none of those movies? I'm going to get y'all talking eventually. No other movies. Y'all all stayed at home. Okay, what did you go see, Mr. Cassie? How is that? I do not like Keith DiCaprio. Because I am 100%, 100% Southern heterosexual, okay? 
I think all men are ugly, and I hope they feel the same way about me. How was it, though? I hate, I hate those movies. I'm not saying those movies. Just go black. Yeah. Mr. Kathy, what'd you say? How'd you like it? it was a great movie. Did it make you mad? Good, go both. Anybody else? So all of y'all sat at home this weekend and didn't go see a movie. Did you see one? How'd you feel about it? Good, go vote. It makes you want to go fight, go fight somebody. I mean, it does because those guys died for nothing. I mean, they died taking care of somebody. Don't get me wrong; they shouldn't have had to do that. They should have either been pulled out or they should have been reinforced. And nothing was done because it was election. Hmm. I don't know. You need to go see it. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I don't want you to feel biased about it. You need to go see it. It's going to be worth bonus points to keep your tickets up. Okay. i got to do, I think I was just the 918. Let me see how many we got left in this section. And then we'll go from there. <coughs> Mode. All right, remember, mode is spelled M O D E. How do you spell most? M O S T. Mode means most. Is it worth anything? No. Do I care about it? No. But you need to know what it is. Can you have more than one mode? Yes, you can. If it's if you got one mode, you just put down that mode. If you got two modes, then that's bimodal. And that's bicycle, bimodal, trimodal, polymodal. Can you have five modes? I mean, yeah, modes. Can you have five? Yes. The only thing that I will tell you, and you need to write this down, do not put zero as a mode when there's nothing. Do not put that. You're going to get some smart aleck teacher, mark it wrong. And they can. If you do not see a mode, what do you put? No mode. You put does not exist. You put NA for non applicable. There ain't none. Learn none. Wherever you're from, you put words when there is not a mode. Do not put zero because there will be some smart aleck. Mark it wrong just because they can. I won't test you very much on the mode. It, there may be test questions with mode, but I don't really care. I mean, most most of y'all can find the mode. Okay, that's 3.1. Mr. Mitchell will make a note. He's going through 3.1. Okay, now, what I want to do now is I want to take the roll, and then I want anybody that has their registration proof to come up after. And what I'll do... All right, some, something I need y'all to do, well, I'll just do it that way. I'll just do it as a quiz. Let me just show that right quick. I'm thinking out loud. Just excuse me. 